Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. And today we are going to wrap up the Final Fantasy 13 unit character guides with Lightning. She's the main character from her game, and she's a pretty selfish character in War of the Visions. When we've been talking about the other FF13 characters, we've kind of looked at, hey, these are the buffs they want to apply to your group. You can layer them with these kind of group buffs. That's not how I think about Lightning so much. She's a character I've played a lot. And one thing you'll notice when you're looking at her kit is she is all about buffing herself and then going and trying to kill the enemy. I think this is a good thing for her. She's definitely meant to be a carry in your group. Unfortunately, she's in an element where her age kind of hurts her a little bit. There are definitely better lightning carries out there. You know, your um, new Astrises of the world, your Bridal Elias, heck, even somebody like Squall, in my opinion, who I'm going to run her with in a group later just to kind of show them off together, is a kind of newer version of her. She's about taking care of herself and then killing the enemy. Her signature skill I want to talk about is definitely pursue because it gives her a follow-up attack. And when she came out, she was one of the earliest units in this game to actually have a follow-up attack, which makes her great at killing units with courage. And if you can get it to hit for hard enough, great for killing units with re-raise too. Although oftentimes follow-up attacks, a unit re-raises, you follow-up attack them, and frustratingly, they might live with still like four or 5% of their HP left. Still, ready to pursue two is the move. This is the buff you have to get on her. It is the buff that turns her from like an older, just DPS character into at least a character that can hang in the modern game. It gives her a 50% generic shield, which is insanely good. It gives her a little bit of resist to help her live in the fight a little bit and to boost her damage it gives her that follow-up attack for three turns you must get this cast which immediately means on a one buff map it's this this is all you're going to get off now the current arena map we have i'm going to attempt to get two buffs off with her by giving her a tmr to move her into the group and do a group buff her group buff she comes with isn't terrible it's agility accuracy and ap for the group i give that like a b not an A, but I'd give that like a B. It does give the agility, which is nice. And so if you didn't want to use a TMR buff, you could have her group buff this, right? But unfortunately, agility is one of those stats that a lot of other buffs in the game also give, so it can be overridden pretty easily. Accuracy, you can never have too much accuracy. You never know when you run to some quasi-evade character and 30 accuracy makes the diff, and the 10 AP is just kind of nice. But that's her group buff, right? And if you scroll through the rest of her kit, like this one is attack and nether beast kill. I mean, maybe for PvE, maybe if you don't want to attack for a turn, and that's what she's got for group buffs. So it's really just not very much. And so focus on making her the best carry she can be with giving her herself buffs, a TMR buff. I'm going to use a haste TMR on her to just try to, you know, help her take those turns and get those damage moves off. And then her support. I want to talk about her support kit a little bit. Most characters come with two, especially if they're like a unique new main job. She has Mark of the Elsie, which is great. It's 12% agility and 40 defense pin. You're going to run that. And then it kind of falls off a cliff a little bit. You have her sniper ones, which is range one and missile attack luck. Or you just do what I do and end up running Viking lore, which is HP and attack. I mean, HP and attack is fine, but it's definitely not a like banger of a of a support ability so she has one like i'll give this like an a minus and you must run it on her because it gives her defense penetration and you need defense pin like watch this i'm going to control f and i'm going to type defense penetration okay so she gets 40 there she can get 40 more from life siphon 2 a move she's going to end up using a ton even though it's a missile scaling move a bonus to her she does have the two damage types built in but this move will give her that extra uh 40 defense pin to get her to 80 and i think that's nice i'm going to talk a little bit more about defense pin as we go i think it's very valuable on her since she does have multiple damage types with missile and slash and not a ton of people run missile resist at least not a lot of people run missile resist like intentionally it might sneak in on a vision card as like an extra buff or there might be units that are just naturally good against missile but she can get a lot of work done with her missile attacks the deal breaker here the problem is if you want her to get two buffs off on a short range map life siphon 2 has a range of one two three four five it'll hit six squares away on shorter maps she might end up getting in there and doing that early which is why i'm going to give her a haste tmr to hopefully let her come to a team 
cast haste, kind of sync up with her, you know, damage dealing brothers or sisters she's going to run in there with, then get ready to pursue off on her second turn. So her third, fourth, and fifth turns, she'll have access to her follow-up attack instead of casting this early and then only having access to it on the second, third, and fourth turn, you could end up like losing it too early. So that's kind of my thought with her there. That's how I'm setting that up. As far as units you want to run her with, I'm going to go to vision cards and talk about that at kind of the same time. So she is a sword knight unit. I love sword knights. It's my favorite job type. Not because I think it's OP, but because Squall and King Bradley are some of my favorite characters in the game and I just love to play them. And she's in this. So this makes her, this, this elevates her in my opinion, just in terms of if I like her or not. This job type vision card setup is both great and just lacking at the same time. There are absolute bangers in here, specifically Melnia's card that gives unit resist and agility and reaction block rate. Like 10 out of 10 vision card right here. You want to use this in her group. Like if you can get away with using this, you'll want to. The problem is if you want to double dip and like run her with Squall like I do, so you get the lightning buffs and you can take advantage of the job based VCs, there's not like what other lightning unit it, there's there's a uh, well you could look at this here's what lightning unit you have these two Frederica and Winter Roth. Okay, so I'm going to make a squad then that's Squall, Lightning, Winter Roth. That's what I'm going to take advantage of. An issue though is Squall, like Lightning, is a very selfish unit. He buffs himself and goes and tries to kill people. So I'm going to see if I can get away with using two selfish units and then a very good supporty DPS unit in Winter Roth. As far as other vision cards I love in this, crit damage, crit rate, and attack percentage, this will boost your team's damage a lot. You also do have a luck spirit and agility card if you were playing during halloween and you pulled that i love that card for her build um the missing thing is aoe resist it's not here there's just not aoe resist in this job type if this job type caught a good aoe resist card it immediately becomes one of the easiest build uh, job type vision card groups in the game if you have this card and then whatever the AOE resist card is. So right now we don't have access to that. So you're kind of stuck looking into the lightning element for your AOE resist or going with a generic like death machine if you have that somehow. Um, you know, cause that's a, that's an old collab card that you would, you know, might not have access to. So I like to go to lightning. Let me jump back over here to, uh, let's look at some lightning based vision cards and first what I want to talk about is actually hers because you might be thinking hold on orange J. if you're playing right now and you have lightning she has an aoe resist lightning vision card and I would say that's true that's pretty nice so if you were running a completely physical team right let's say you're running her squall and then you know, or Landu because you want to keep it spicy you could absolutely get away with running this you're going to get lightning attack critical evade aoe resist then you can mix in any other card to your team comp that you want a problem is if you look at my team comp that I'm going to run with her, I am running a magic scaling unit and this magic scaling unit needs to be the one holding the AOE vision card. Because if we jump back over here to the vision cards, your two options are Odin's Chosen or do, 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 wish upon a demon. Now I'm going to use wish upon a demon because the uh, other options just aren't great. So I kind of feel like I'm forced into using this one, which means it bumps her card down a notch. Still, if you were pulling any of the vision cards from this collaboration and you're a lightning player, I think there's a ton of use for this and I am going to run it in a sub slot on my team. A nut so the, let me just recap a little bit right here. Here's what you're getting, and, and I'll throw it back to the game for just a second. I feel like I was kind of all over the place in my explanation. Here on this card, I'm getting unit resist and agility. Here on this card, I'm getting AOE resist and then some other nice things. Then I'm left with a freebie. I've taken care of the three like must haves and now I can get away with running something like Dark Ifrit, which will give me defense pin 25, putting her at 100 if you want to use her long range skill or giving you the option to put her at 65 with just this 
just her support ability and then maybe running a defense pin piece of gear like Blackguard putting her at 85, giving you the option to maybe not use your long range defense pin buff and instead stick to maybe a few shorter range attacks. So it, you could play with that card a little bit. The defense pin will also be useful for like Squall. And then I get Pierce attack resist and slash attack up, which Squall and her were both really like. So I get to use a third vision card and still get away with the, you know, the benefit of running a double dipping vision card like Melnia is right here then you can see i drop to her vision card in her sub slot squall's vision card for single target resist in his sub slot and then another agility card right here in salir versus rachez round 30. so that's what i'm looking at there for my team if you were looking for other good vision cards to work in with her um squalls is a good option if you don't have the melnia card and you're running mono lightning you could do squalls i like dreamiest of eggs a whole lot here because you could run single target resist and slash attack resist penetration if you're running her with somebody like a lightning asterius this could be a really good place to look or any other slashing dps units i would probably maybe work in dreamiest of eggs if i could i think it's an awesome option uh dark ifrit is another defense pin or no i already showed that one whoops uh salir versus rachel is going to be an agility card so that's what i'm running in the sub slot for my magic scaling unit scorpion sentinel is really good attack crit rate slash resist it also gives a whole bunch of good unit effect bu uh, buffs right here so i like that one a lot and then steel plated destruction i guy on something people miss about this one this is an older card not a lot of people have it it has 20 slash attack resist pin in the unit effect or 12 slash pin if you sub slot it that's nice slash attack accuracy is always good and a little hp for your groups never bad either so this is a card that i think could get some play here that's kind of your options for the vision cards but let's go to the builder here and let me show you how i'm setting things up okay lightning i gave her uh, Legendary Beast. It's actually Squall's TMR. It's a way for me to get haste on her, but it will force her into Squall. So I'm going to make her faster than Squall. Squall's going to be my slowest dude here. She's going to run to him in theory, buff that, give herself haste. Squall is my slowest guy. And then I'm going to have Winter Roth come in over the top, give her great buff from Supplicant. I'll show it to you right um, here. Right of Refuge just gives AoE resist. It gives light, dark resist, critical evade. This will make these two DPS units that are going to be charging in together hopefully un shottable right? I just want them to have a chance to unload on the enemy, and I want them to give them a chance to kill the enemy, not just be blown up. I think I need this buff from Winter Roth, so she'll be my second fastest unit, and then Squall's just going in, and he's going to try to mess some folks up. So she's a pretty straightforward unit to play, if I'm being real. Like, give her good teammates, let her buff herself, ha control her movement with a group buff or don't, and then let things happen. Now, let's start it off with what should be should be an easy win we're gonna fight new shadow links summer glassy and perrine i will say that a lot of folks have these three units or at least two of these three units rated higher than lightning and a lot of people still sleep on how good squall is in my opinion as well so i would say i have elemental advantage here which i do I have massive elemental advantage, but I'm running some maybe lower prioritized units. So let's see how we do in an elemental adv advantageous matchup just to make sure we're like viable. Then we'll look to fight literally whatever's on the top, right? With this build that we're running here, the only thing we're really set up to be good against is water because we have elemental advantage. Otherwise, we're just building for bruisery levels of survivability and lots of damage from squall lightning and winter rock so there's the griever's wings that gives her the haste and the buff then we get the aoe resist buff dark and light resist buff which again dark and light resist buff is just so good and then i want to mention something that's maybe a little bit more of an advanced tip with somebody with a follow-up attack if you're gonna have her here like summer glassy has courage so i'd really like oh that's a mis okay we got to fix that she double grievers wings. We do not want her double grievers wings inning. Uh, double grievers wings inning. That's unfortunate. So we'll fix that for the next fight. She still got ready to pursue two off. So it's not the it's not a total loss. Anyway, I would like for her to go last. It kind of worked out in our favor right here. As Squall's going to unload his limit break on the tank. If she's going later in a fight, she has a better chance of last hitting the unit, and then uh, that allows her to pop courage. So, like right here, had Roth 
had a follow-up attack, she would have killed Glassy and not forced Lightning to also do it. That's 5,000 damage from Lightning's follow-up attack right here, which definitely would have killed a re-raise unit. So what I'm saying is you want her acting later in your team comp, like if you're running three units back to back to back, like we are because our agilities are synced, you would like for your unit with the follow-up attack to be one of the later units acting in my opinion, or at least not the first. So that way, if she pops somebody, her follow-up attack right there can, you know, kill their courage or kill their re-raise. Okay, early returns, that, 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 that went really well. That went really well. Now we're ranked 2000, so it's not like we're top 100 in arena, but to give you an idea of how much arena refreshing I've been doing this week, well, you guys have watched a lot of my fights. All of them have been after I've done my dailies, so they've all been using at least one arena restore. Here, we'll fight a uh, we'll fight a wind team here. Let's see how we do against the Zidane uh, classy glassy wind team. Um, classy glassy flag bear glassy, what am I talking about? Anyway. Um, I was saying words. Yeah, so two, rank 2000 is, is like if you played Arena, you won most of your fights and you refreshed Arena a few times, not really caring to take full advantage of the bonuses. I'm, I'm getting some bonus v VCs and units in there. Obviously, since I'm using the Final Fantasy 13 units this week, but it's a, it's a decent test, right? My new player account really struggles if it tries to break into like the three or two thousands. I really have to pick fights that I want. And with most of these teams I'm running here, I'm just fighting whatever's at the top and seeing how I do. And that's what we're going to get here against this win team. Okay, here we go. Now, I did not take off her haste buff for this fight. So Griever's Wings, she's going to end up doing this twice again. We get a little bit lucky that Roth you know, jumps on that crate back there, which will encourage Lightning to move backwards and I don't think she'll instantly be in range of Dario right here right like Dario's gonna put his magic shield up which isn't gonna do him a ton of good in this and we will get the second application of uh Griever's wings dang it I, I feel like Dario's gonna be too close to us or Dario's gonna move too close and I think lightning's not gonna get herself buff online which could really hurt us especially if fighting gets a unit like Zidane who has that courage and you would love to just be able to pop it we get a little bit of a heal and then yeah there's the dispel spread so we do get a dispel which is nice and then a nice winding blade over the top from Squall, but we're definitely off to a worse fight. Imagine, like, if any of these units ever live from a lightning attack, from one of lightning's attacks, and they have, like, courage up or very little HP, the follow-up attack would have just been the difference. Lightning does catch the HP absorb, and they are grouping for us here. So let's see what she could do. Squall's down. Our movement hasn't been great. Dispel spread comes out again. That's big damage. But look at that. It pops a courage on Zidane. Had our buffing just worked out better, Zidane is dead, and it's Roth versus just Glassy, which I would have liked our chances there a lot better. Instead, it's Roth versus Zidane and Glassy. Now, she's going to end up killing Zidane anyway, but that's slow Glassy, which could be nice. Now, there's the Courage Pop for her. So, can Glassy one-shot us? No, she can't. She didn't move and she slowed. So, even though she didn't move, we'll still win this fight. Okay, that's pretty good. That was a good showing. I need to fix my movement so old Squall isn't um, acing himself as he just did there. But, hey, go out there alone and dying, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then we'll uh, we'll see. We got a little bit of a heal from Roth. You don't see that often. She prefers to go up there and mix it up and do some damage. Let's see what we can do. You know what? Let's instead. Oh, man. Do I go like double solo buff for her? I don't know. I could look for a different TMR. This one just gives her three agility. And even with that, she's still so fast. I could give her... Pissarro's battle wear, which would then force me to change her um, armor that she was wearing to something like a pod, which really isn't a terrible change. I'll go like pod. I'll do the plus one pod. This puts her at 122. I just really need to make sure that she's still faster than everybody. She's maybe a little bit too much faster than everybody. So it's not the ideal swap, but she will now she'll just be completely selfish now. Ooh, OK, I'm not going ah. 2P is going to obliterate us. 2P will absolutely... Do, we're going to do it anyway. We'll do it anyway. This is a very, very modern strike team. One of the better meta teams in the game that we're fighting right here. I expect to lose this. Like, I do think I know what the upper powers of this team comp 
is and it's probably like a minus b plus and we are about to fight an a plus team comp now maybe this team comp is you know when you see a team like this maybe this person is doesn't have as good of an account as i do there's always a chance that i just have uh this person doesn't have the level of vision cards that somebody's been playing for four years does so even though they're running the meta team comp they don't have the vcs or espers or something like that but I'm going to assume that they do and will be proven otherwise. Either way, it's going to be a challenge for us. 2P in particular, going to be rough. So there's the pad foot buff. She still moves to the same spot. She's still hasted. All of that is good. There's our second buff right there. The, we'll at least get a little bit of advantage out of that dark attack buff against the um, Ketone unit. We got haste on Squall and her. Aliyah doing her massive group buff right there. And now Lightning. Okay, there's ready to pursue. So this time... Lightning and Squall moving up together. They both get their haste buff and their selfish buff off. I love to see that. And it looks like we're going, well, Eli is probably gonna be able to move into range and do some work on us here, but it's just on two. We actually tank that okay. And here we go, Life Siphon comes out and the follow-up attack. So decent-ish damage right there. Squall's gonna trick thrust and okay, there's an example of what I was talking about earlier. It would have been better if Squall would have gone first. If Squall had gone first and taken a lie at a half HP, then uh, Lightning comes in, pops her to zero, her Courage pops, and the follow-up attack from Lightning would have killed her. That would have been more ideal. But still, anyway, we get the Life Siphon off right there with the follow-up attack, and it looks good for us so far, but uh, let's not forget we got 2P who's gonna just one-shot our whole team. Yep, there we go. The follow-up attack kills Roth. The follow-up attack almost kills Squall, and now he's gonna lose this 1v1. Absolutely, he will. That's why we were gonna lose. We really hung in there against, like, Strike not element stuff it do it get yeah, once once 2p jumped in there we were toast still you have to say not bad not bad it would be great if we could slow lightning down a little bit so our first round of attack was squall and then lightning that's the one adjustment i'm gonna make right here i'm just gonna slow her down now unfortunately to do that i might have to use espers to do that which doesn't feel great unless is the uh but she's using this pod this pod only has five we could switch to the aoe resist pod we lose a little bit of accuracy but we gain some defense and a little bit of crit um sure let's see if slowing down by two is enough to let cloud or not cloud i've probably said cloud 50 times let squall go earlier and in fact you know what i'm going to do instead I'm not going to do exactly that. I'm gonna speed Squall up a little bit as well. We're at 115. I need Squall to be the slowest, but not necessarily by a bunch. Nah, I can not only I can only speed him up one. I'm not gonna do that. Let, let's just see if this works out. If not, it is what it is. I don't wanna fight. Okay, here's a magic team. We haven't fought this yet. So we're gonna run into mages. The dark and light resist buff from Roth. We're gonna get a lot more value out of it this time. Um, I'm encouraged after the last fight, watching it how well Squall and Lightning dealt with the new Katone and the Ally of the Alabaster, but we were always just scared of the 2P in that match. And if I was really playing Arena seriously, like if this was my Arena team and Lightning was my girl, and I was like, you know what, I'm playing for top 100 or top 10 or something, I just wouldn't have picked that fight. You know what I mean? And that is definitely a huge part of Arena. Just don't do stupid things. In fact, that's not just a huge part of Arena. It's a huge part of like most of life. Don't do stupid things. And, and things are going to go better. So there's the pad foot buff. Okay. Here's Vivi. That's interesting movement by them. I wonder how that's going to play out for us. They're really, um, really turtling up. And then we get a different move right there from our Roth. Excuse me, mute button, great for having a quick sneeze. Undying wall from there, not winter rough. And then there's ready to pursue. It looks like we're gonna, it's gonna work out well for us being in range to attack after they move twice. So we should be like getting the first opportunity to swing. It might only be Helena in range. We tanked that okay, but Squall got put to sleep, which absolutely sucks. And it is still going to be lightning going first. Now that's really respectable damage onto the Helena right there, but we are now nice and grouped and Squall didn't move. Uh, we kill her, but she re-raises. I feel like if Squall wasn't asleep, we've killed Helena and this is a good fight. But unfortunately for us, 
Squall did go to sleep. And now Helena gets to limit break our whole team and kill Squall. So man, that's one of the reasons you just get to see right there, the power of young Helena. By putting a unit to sleep, she just absolutely dunked on us. Now, speaking of dunking on somebody, that's a big time dunk from our Lightning who even things back up at a 2v2 for a split second until our, our Roth goes down. Lightning gonna keep trying to work over their tank, but yeah, I think Squall going to sleep probably just put a bow on this. Vivi's gonna kill us right here with double dark, uh, darker Grugaga, and that's it. So, oh man, I definitely think, again, it's another fight where I, I feel like if like one more thing doesn't goes our way, if I could have been just a little more perfect or I could have gotten a little bit more lucky, we would have won. But that's that's kind of the, that's kind of the story of these like almost super good units, right? Why did we lose to Helena? It's not because she could do vastly more damage than us. It's not because she was so much tankier than us. It's because well, she has re-raise in her kit, and all of her damaging moves, all, like or her damaging move, also just puts you to sleep. Does it matter that Lightning hit her for 12k or something like that? No, not really, because Squall was asleep. So sure, we kill her. She just re-raises. Squall's like. And then she killed, you know, drops a bomb on our whole team and kills Squall. And when you lose your Bash brother, eh, things go south from there. We never catch up. Okay, so what what are things Lightning could use? While we're in the loading screen here, let me go ahead and give her a little bit of a grade. I'm gonna say that in game, according to the game, and I'll, I'll throw this on the screen for just a second. According to the game, she's a 90 cost unit. I don't think so. I think she's usable. I think she's super usable, but I would throw her more in that 80 cost range. I believe that's where I already had her set up. And so I think I just agree with that. I, I think she's she's good. She's like what a UR unit should be, but she just lacks something. Like if some of her damaging moves just it stopped people or something like that or just more reliably she could i don't know you saw what helena did and not only does helena do that all the time she does it on like one of her best moves uh, yeah that's sort of what she's missing i i do think lightning's good i think she's super usable i think squall even though squall has been like squall's been a little bit of my sacrificial lamb right here i'm running him like a tank he's not the greatest person to run her with because they're both so selfish if i was able to run her with somebody who is a little bit more of a group buffer alongside of her i think we might even be a little bit better off okay once again we're we're going into a unit with courage and squall goes second so you end up instead of with a dead snow well squall then goes third and fourth um instead of having a dead snow or a dead ooh, the preemptive counter attack we killed him um okay hold on she's popping off a2 though a newer collaboration unit gonna take a chance um anyway whatever i was saying that was really hype the befuddling spearfall cast time was a uh, op right there there's that we get the follow-up uh, HP absorb. So if we can live through some of what AP is doing, uh, almost with the follow-up attack. What do you know? Another almost. Okay, the jump's gonna kill our Roth. Now lightning's gonna summon on her. Okay, so here's the Odin summon. We'll go ahead and click the skip animation there. A2 dies. She re-raises. We have a chance. Agility up, accuracy up, scrapper slash. Okay, we don't do too badly. Gets that arm shot for the win. There we go. So there was her attack that could disable. It's just single target and missile. You know, so yeah, good luck. She does have a disable shot, I suppose. Anyway, not terrible, right? We fought a A2 snow team right there and took them down. They had Reagan out there, who's another unit that I think is in that like 80 cost range. Maybe she's kind of comparable in power to Reagan. I know I haven't thought about that a ton, but there's your lightning showcase slash guide. And we have now done one of these videos for every one of the FF13 units. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching them as much as I've enjoyed making them. Thank y'all. And it's, it's been really nice to do these on a week where we've had, um, you know, the news got pushed back. The We're switching to Monday. So there's just kind of these extra days floating around. We're having some videos like this to make has been really fun. All right. Thank y'all for watching. I'll catch you later. Peace.